I don't sing, I don't dance, I don't do those anymore, anything I don't show, you won't try here anymore. We have chronicled the miserable failure of Michael, 35, as he tries to find a woman to go with him on his first date following his recent divorce. He has been devoting abundant time and energy to the art of wooing a woman through mobile dating applications. Unfortunately, he's been running into roadblocks. He's experiencing one of those roadblocks as he enters his local pub to meet Bradley, 32. Will you look at this nonsense? What is this nonsense? I've been messaging this girl for a week. When I ask her out, she says, are you Jewish? I say no, and she says it's a deal breaker for her. Can I see her? Michael hands his cellular telephone to Bradley. Oh shit, she's cute. Yeah, I'm aware. That's why I was messaging her. Wow, you guys were texting a lot before she dropped the reverse racism on you. That's kind of surprising, actually. Yeah, it's frustrating. Then yesterday I had a girl bail on me because she forgot about her aunt's birthday. Super lame, right? Dude, I get that all the time. If you keep pursuing them, then it's their cousin's birthday, and then it's their sister's birthday, and then it's their brother's birthday. It's like everyone in this family chooses one day of the year to get inseminated, and then the anniversary of that date just happened to be nine months ago. In that case, I wish they'd just be honest. Just tell me you don't want to. I mean, wait, what are you doing with my phone? Well, I may not be Jewish, but I am sitting next to my charming Jewish friend. Are you messaging her? Of course. I've got what she's looking for. I don't get it. If she only wanted to date a Jewish guy, why wouldn't she be on one of the Jewish dating apps? Why waste my time when I'm definitely not what you're looking for? I'm with you, man. I actually don't have a good answer for that. These swipey apps are pretty bad at letting people suss out deal breakers before they start messaging each other. And that gets into situations like this one. Exactly. Like, if I was really into cats, I would join personals.com. Are you making a joke? Uh Uh-uh. Got a pop-up for it the other day. Michael takes his cellular telephone from Bradley and uses the web browser on it to visit personals.com. He shows the screen to Bradley. The internet is cancer. Yeah, it's not natural. I mean, deal breakers go both ways, though. My friend Amber is always telling me about the terrible messages she gets from guys, and yesterday she texted me about a dude who asked if he could tickle her. First message, and it was very politely written, something like, I'm searching for a petite, fresh-faced woman who will allow me to tickle her with reckless abandon. Good God. There's something about the fresh face that makes me very uncomfortable. Also not crazy about the reckless abandon part of that message. Nope, don't like that message at all. That being said, if a girl messaged me that she wanted to tickle me, that's not a deal breaker. High threshold. So what's a deal breaker for you? Hold on, your lovely Jewish vixen just texted us back. Oh, she said she wants to see pics of you. Yes! Okay, uh, I'll text you some. (laughs) Alright, so deal breakers. Well, first off, I don't date anybody in Jersey. That's fair. I can't date a vegan either. Vegetarians are not ideal, but they're fine. Uh, But absolutely no vegans. That reminds me of a conversation I had with a tall guy in India. (sighs) Okay. So this tall guy, he's like six foot four, right? Real handsome. And not an Indian guy, by the way. A white American guy that I was with in India. I was sitting at a table with him, another tall guy, and a tall, gorgeous girl. And I'm listening to these tall humans talk about the difficulties they have dating. So this guy's issue is that he has a gluten allergy and foodies won't date him. And this tall, gorgeous woman at the table, she says that she indeed would not date him because he can't eat pizzas and and stuff like that with her. And then I jump in and agree because, like you, one of my deal breakers is a girl who can't eat every kind of food with me. And it was just really nice to see a tall guy deal with that kind of disappointment. So my 5'10 self, who has been rejected by no small amount of tall women because of my height, thinks maybe I can get this tall girl now. Did you hook up with her? No, not even close. The height deal breaker is strong, way stronger than my ability to eat pizza with her. Seriously, do you have any idea how many women put on their profile will not date a man under six feet? I guess it's a good thing. I mean, you gotta throw your deal breakers out there, no matter how shallow they are. Wait, do you think men write stuff like that? I mean, I wouldn't, but others must because it's a cycle of shallow deal breakers being written straight up. But screw it. Next time a girl asks me how tall I am before we meet, I'm gonna ask her what her bra size is. That's not gonna go over well. No doubt. But anyway, I think your deal breakers are pretty reasonable. Though there are probably some cute girls in Jersey. Agreed. But I've charted this out, right? So for a girl to be so attractive that I would need to travel all the way to Jersey to see her, she was definitely out of my league. I want to see that chart one day. Are there any other deal breakers? What if she's a criminal? Like, what kind of criminal? I definitely would not date a murderer. Well, if she's a known murderer, she's not going to be available to date. So murderers, rapists, child porn peeps, they're all off the table. They're stuck in jail. 
But what if she's like a con woman? So let's say she targets people who have recently lost loved ones and have come into some money, and then these people are so emotionally vulnerable, she uses her sociopathic wiles to swindle them out of their cash. But, you know, she's super cute. Wait, is she still a sociopath? Like, was it just like a phase? Are you hearing yourself? Do you know people who've grown out of being a sociopath? But does she live in Jersey? No. Okay, then I'm fine with a cute Manhattanite being a sociopath. I just want her to, like, eat delicious meat with me. Oh, the girl just messaged again. Uh, she wants me to give you her number. Yes! All right, let me type. While I'm in your phone, can I message your imaginary girlfriend? Ellen? Oh, yeah, go for it. Okay, I've been wanting to do this for so long. Ha ha ha. Heart eyes emoji unicorn flexi arm eggplant 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 done. While Bradley is messaging from Michael's phone, Michael notices a photograph of a pair of attractive women on Bradley's phone. Hmm, who are those lovely ladies? Uh, the one on the left is the girl I've been on a few dates with, and the one on the right is her friend, I guess. I was just stalking her Instagram account. Ah, man, the one you're seeing is really hot. That tattoo is badass. Huh? Oh, shit, apparently I don't know my left from my right. That's the friend. I've been out with the redhead. Oh, even better. Find out if her friend is single. I wasn't really planning on texting her today. Seriously? You owe me one for this. I fixed you up with that lovely Jewess. Yeah, but I've been thinking I don't want to see the redhead anymore at all. Come on, I was not Jewish so you could talk to that girl. Make this happen for me. <sighs> Airtight case there. Fine. Bradley convinces Marie, 27, the red-haired woman from his phone, to set up a double date for the four of them. Bradley selects a rustic tapas restaurant in the East Village. He may not be excited about his date, but he knows Michael needs to get back out there. Marie is the poster child of an extrovert. While never taking any particular pride in her academic achievements, her energy and excitement have been luring people toward her her entire life. Marie works as a receptionist at a law firm and never thinks about work outside the office. Instead, she partakes in all of life's adventures, from dating to hiking to exploring the world at large. Marie's tattooed co-worker is Gina, 31. Gina, a petite lawyer who has devoted herself to helping refugee families gain citizenship in the United States, does not date often. She's happy and confident with her life and finds great pleasure in her work. She does not require a husband or family to reach fulfillment. However, she recently discovered that her phone tracks the amount of steps she takes daily. After noticing one day that she had only taken 837 steps, roughly 8% of the daily recommended total, she took it as a sign she should get out more. By the time the double date is upon him, Michael is a weary combination of nervous and excited. Bradley is neither. So your deal breaker is that a guy just shouldn't be taller than you? Like you don't have a specific height? The specific height is my height. Well, that's reasonable. Why is that reasonable? Wasn't reasonable earlier today. No, earlier today I was saying I don't like it when women will only date guys over six feet, like that kind of specific. You're specifically pissing me off. Anyway, so Marie, any deal breakers for you? Yeah, I've had bad experiences dating chefs. Their schedules are awful and they are completely narcissistic. I can see that. That makes sense. Yeah, I also don't date black guys. Afraid you'll never go back? <laughs> no, I'm just not really attracted to them, and when I've seen black guys have sex with white girls in porn, it looks like a duty going into them. Are you being serious right now? It's not a racist thing, it's a preference thing. Do you hear how this sounds? I'm sorry if that's not, you know, politically correct. Excuse me, everybody, I'm going to the bathroom. Bradley stands up and makes his way to the lavatory. Is he really that sensitive? <laughs> He's really not that sensitive. Well, I'm not racist. So, Gina, uh, any other deal breakers for you? Well, usually it doesn't come out until later in the relationship, but I get turned off when guys have no interest in giving back to their community. I completely agree. It's incredibly important to give back. I know I couldn't be where I am today without people around me supporting me, so it's really important to help others. So what type of work do you do? Oh, I'm an artist on animated movies. No, no, I mean, that's cool, but what type of charity work do you do? Oh, uh, charity work. Um, um, like, work I'm involved with now? Uh, oh, I just did the, the uh, ice bucket challenge thing, and then um, every, mu every uh, November I grow a mustache. So you donated money to ALS and prostate cancer research? Wait, I mean, yeah, like, like, in, like, I, like I grew the mustache? Oh, Brad's back. Hey, are we still talking about deal breakers? Did you get to the part where you said you wouldn't date a vegan, but you would date a sociopath that takes money from grieving relatives of the recently deceased? <laughs> He's kidding. That's not what I said. That's definitely what you said. It's completely out of context. I really just like food a lot and, you know, sharing those experiences with someone. It's really important to me. I feel like we're glossing over the part where you date someone who steals money from the bereaved. No, it's just that I'm allergic to fish with fins. The fuck? Michael leans over to Bradley and says quietly, Are you trying to sabotage me here? 
I'm totally checked out, man. I, I gotta go to the bathroom again. Bradley stands up from the table and walks to the lavatory again. Is he doing drugs in there? No, he just has a real sensitive stomach. But he said he could eat everything on the menu. Yeah, he eats everything. He's just not that good at it. So you're allergic to fish with fins. I am. Salmon, tuna, oysters, and perch. S-T-O-P. What? Salmon, tuna, oysters, perch. That's what I'm allergic to. S-T-O-P. It spells stop. Oysters don't have fins. I know. It's just a pneumonia device. Are you trying to say mnemonic device? Bradley returns to the table. Oh, good. That was fast. Yeah. Uh, We all good here? Can we get the check? You not feeling so well? Sure. Let's go with that. Bradley walks swiftly to the host table to get the check. Michael turns to Gina. So listen, I really had a great time with you tonight. Are you free at all next week? I'd like to take you out to dinner one night. Yeah, sure. Here, give me your number and I'll give you my number. Every appetizer was $15? Why did you recommend so many? Oh, you have a 206 area code. Are you from Seattle? I am. I grew up there and moved to New York a few years ago. Oh, that's great. I was just in Seattle earlier this year. And it was great. I loved it. $280 for a bunch of appetizers and two rounds of drinks. Yeah, it's great. Although after living in New York a couple years, Seattle just feels so much smaller. I still love it, but I don't think I could ever move back there. Well, you didn't have to deal with the racist, fish-phobic winner we had at our table. I know I brought her here! I obviously make bad choices! I'm not on trial here! Bradley walks back to the table. Everything okay, man? Yeah, we're good. Let's go. As the group stands up and prepares to leave the restaurant, Michael pulls Bradley aside and says, Is your stomach all right? You... Been in the bathroom so many times. Oh, sorry for leaving you hanging like that. I was just texting Mara to set up our date tomorrow. Later that week, Bradley and Michael meet at Bradley's apartment after work. Hey, buddy. So how'd things go with Mara? It was fine. My world remains decidedly not on fire. You gonna see her again? She wanted to go on our second date to a spin class. It turns out that's a deal breaker for me. How about you? You seeing Gina again? I tried to set up a date, but she canceled it. She said she was too busy. What made her so busy? Well, she said she had a lot going on at work. Not great. And then she said uh, she had a lot of family birthdays coming up. That is bad for you. So she said she wouldn't be able to see me for the next month or so. But I'll see her next month, right? You are never going to see her again. Too Old to Date was created by Mike Tanzillo and Brad Garoon. This episode was written by Brad and Mike with production assistance from Toby Singer. Our theme music is Loveless by Go Go Ghost. Stalk us on social media at Too Old to Date. If you have questions, comments, or the unbearable desire to be an angry troll, email us at info at tooltodate.com. Want to share your dating stories? Give us a call at 718-559-1040 and leave us a message with your story. If we get really good ones, we'll play them on the show. For more info, visit tooltodate.com. And while you're there, consider leaving a donation. It will help us make more shows, pay for more dates, and um, maybe give the narrator a raise. Darkest night, and we will glow in our places anymore. Guess you're right, and I was true. We won't try you anymore. I've been missing You asked me what for